but this is our A51A sluice. It's really good in low water conditions. It's also very portable, and it's a nice lightweight sluice. I mean, this thing weighs, I'm sure it's under five pounds. This will weigh anything. So we've kind of got a spot picked out for it. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're almost there. And sometimes if you have too high of a flow or and you have too much energy and it wants to wash the sluice away, sometimes we'll set a flat rock yep. over the top of the sluice to hold it down. Now this is looking good. See, we have a nice V going down the center. The sluice box is relatively flat side to side. We have, what would you say, Pat, about a half inch per foot drop? Half inch to three quarters of an inch. Yeah, and I mean, a sluice box, you can run it a lot steeper or a lot faster. If you have really fast water, you can run it, you can run the sluice box flatter. If you have slower water, you can run the sluice box deeper. But this is kind of ideal right here. You got some material ready for me, Pat? That's classifying material. And I should have the bucket filled with water. So the water comes up through the bottom of it and washes off a lot of the rocks, which might have clays on them, which uh, contain and that are holding on to the gold. Yeah, but we're just sampling so far, Pat, so let's just see what happens. Okay. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna feed the sluice. You want a trowel? Um, I, I could probably dump in it, but yeah, give me a trowel too. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and feed the sluice box. I think I'm gonna just try dumping it in. Now see, to pan this would probably take me, you know, about probably 15 minutes to pan all this out, something like that, but the sluice just does it so much faster. And that's how you're able to run quantity of material, increasing your chances of finding gold. There's a lot of black sand here, Pat, I can see it. Oh yeah. I could use a little bit steeper, maybe. I'm gonna, no, it's, no, I'm just let it flow. I think you're right, okay. When you increase the angle, you increase the water velocity. Now what you can't, I mean, I can see from here, all the material back in here is all very loose. It's all dancing, I can feel it. There's really not a lot of structure. But you can see the black sand building up in there. It's kind of nice to have that big trough in the front as well because uh, it, uh, the water can go around it and it erodes away a little slower. So you can feed the sluice a little bit more. You, have to be, you don't have to feather the material. You can be a little more, you know, just dump material and walk away. But it seems, it seems to be working good. So the flare definitely has some advantages. But look at this, you can see the black sand building up here. The ripples are all built up in black sand. And talk about the indicator mat. Well, I'm watching the indicator mat, but this is the, the black rim matting here. It won't hold gold for a long period of time, but what it will do is you'll spot the gold as soon as it comes through. The gold won't get past the riffle board. It won't get past these, but it does get past this, but you can see it as soon as you dump it in there. It'll sit there for a minute. And again, the ideal scenario is, let's say if uh, I'm, I'm out with someone else, well, they bring in some material, they feed it, they, they don't see any gold. I feed it and I see gold. We're going to concentrate where I'm finding the gold. And it's important in any kind of a gold mining system, you want to have a good, consistent feed. You don't want to feed it, just, you want to have a nice, smooth, constant feed. It does make a difference. A lot of heavies here. You see anything in the indicator? Maybe a little bit, but I can't tell for sure. Do you need your glasses? <laughs> I need my glasses. What a joy getting all there, but what can you do? You, you, you have to keep your reading glasses on all the time. Come on, keep seeing the time. Oh, okay. Don't let a sluice be full. Now, this is our smallest sluice. It's more or less a backpacker type sluice. Yeah. It can, you can actually unbolt the flare yep. and set the flare 
over the slews and pack it right? a lot smaller. Is that a plate right there? I, I do see a little, I see some little teeny pieces, about one or about three little pieces so far. We're getting a little bit of buildup in the first circle, but all the rest of them are running perfect, so I can keep doing a little faster. Feed me. Feed me. That's why I like to feed the sluice, because you gold. can feed them. There's a piece of gold right there. No, see I see that, right? right in the middle there, right? Yep. And I think I saw some other ones, too. I see that system mining or something. Just dump the bucket. Now I'm going to. By the way, I love these uh, three-gallon buckets. As I get older, I appreciate the smaller buckets. <laughs> And the handles are just so cool. And you're not going to hurt your hands. <laughs> yeah, I see a couple pieces. So, you want to you want to give me some more material? We'll feed it. Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, I'm gonna toss this over there. Oh yeah, look at that orange dirt in there. I've yeah. definitely seen a couple pieces in here. I've had a piece right there. Did you? Yep. Yeah, all those floods through here, Pat, could have made a difference. Oh, it did. Yeah. You can see how the, can, the, the sand's all changed a lot. But see, that's where you want to do it. You want to dig in the river. No, no, I get it. You want to get that, that virgin material. Yeah. Some of that water out. You guys were so nice to clap it. And by the way, we only screened it down to a half inch, which is the size I like. Some guys screen it fine, but I think it's kind of a waste of time, don't you, Pat? Half inch is fine. That's like the right size. Well, the finer you classify the material, the better recovery you can get. Because then you have more of a uniform size classification. And it takes less energy to move the smaller material than it does the ma larger material so you get a lot smoother flow. And plus you don't have large rocks dancing in and out of the ripples that can cause migration of gold. Yeah, but my my point is half inch is fine. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. That's the maximum size I'd run through. Right. But I've ne I don't like to go any small because it takes too long to classify it. Well, it just depends on the type of material you Well, yeah, but you got to find a balance. You have to have a balance of how much time you invest, how much gold you're going to capture. Now, by the way, that one piece of gold that we had sitting on here from the last batch, uh, it did migrate down the box, but I see a few more new pieces popping up now, so. I had to pan this stuff out. I would have done, you know, maybe 10% what I can move with a sluice. That's why a sluice box is so nice. And again, you know, running the old school traditional you know, rib carpet, expanded metal and riffle is a very forgiving um, flute. You don't have, once the gold gets trapped in the carpet, it never comes out until you wash it out. All right, so I'm going to show you real quickly. You can see the ripples are working perfect. See the black sand piling up behind the expanded metal, behind the riffle. All this material behind here is just dancing. It's not It's not hard pack, it's loose pack. It's really, really working well. And my dog's going nuts. <laughs> Say hello, Pat. Daddy. Teddy, come here. Come on, what do you want? 
So anyways, and now all the indi Teddy. All the indicator maps gone clean now. Somebody wants me to throw a stick. I, I haven't had a tick on me this year, but I've had poison oak four times, five times so far from being out in the hills. Okay, we're ready for that. That's it then. Let's do a cleanup, Pat. You want to do it real quick? Yeah. Are you, is there more in the, is the indicator still, Matt, carrying the goal or to get washed through? Yeah, I think you should get a close-up of that. Okay, let me come over. So what they know what to look for. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Let me zoom in on that. Yeah. Oh, you, oh look at that. Now I can see it. That's way cool. And I don't think anything even migrated down to the riffle. No, I That's thought. what happens when you classify your material and you regulate your flow. Uh, right. I need the uh, Happens classifier. Okay, sometimes when I'm cleaning out a real small sluice, I don't always use a bucket. Sometimes I can simply use a pen and a classifier. So if I set this down, I'll set that right there. And then I can take the sluice out nice and even. Okay. Let me have a second pan. Washing out the indicator mat? Yep. Once that stuff sticks in the indicator mat, it's kind of hard to get it out. Even a couple of splashes of water don't always get that gold off of it. You know what's funny? I've um, never used a classifier to contain the material, but that's well, actually that good. Well, that with the pan underneath it. Yeah, but I've never done that before. You learn something new every day. So I just now, always, I always dumped it in a bucket or a pan. Well, my riffles are washed off now. Yeah, that's true. Now I can. Uh... Let me show what this looks like here, Pat. Hang on. So you can see the nice load on the riffles. You see the black sand tucked up underneath. You see a little bit of material built up behind where the riffles were, so it's uh, looking pretty good. So he's peeling off his expanded metal. You gotta be careful, that those, it gets a little sharp sometimes. Yep. And he's gonna wash the, uh, the carpet. I'm gonna just check in here real quick. Yeah, we're clean in here. Man, these are so easy to move around. They're so damn light. So Pat's probably going to lift it up and kind of rock it back and forth. That kind of liberates the gold from the carpet. And you know, can a little piece of gold be still on the carpet? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but who cares? It's not going anywhere. All right, that's probably good. You gonna pan it out real quick? Oh yeah. I see a little color, Pat. I'm gonna zoom a little tighter in this thing here. Let's see if I can catch this. Now get away from the riffles. You're on the texture section, aren't you? And I'm just kind of like dog paddling is what I call it. Getting that light silicates out of there. Not too much energy to flush the gold out. So what we would normally do is we would, once we see that gold, we just get our, oh shoot, look at that. Holy our sniffer bottle. Get our sniffer bottle. Wow. Yeah, more than I thought. Yeah, a lot more than we thought. Hell, we're gonna have to hang out here for a while. All right, let's just set this aside. No, wait, hold on. Oh, you're gonna back. 